Alrighty, now chemical weathering. Um, whereas physical weathering was the physical breakdown of a rock, chemical weathering is the chemical breakdown of a rock. Well, what does that mean? It means one of two things. Um, it means that the rock um, may dissolve. You definitely have trouble arguing that that's not destructive, uh, breaking down something. And then something uh, that you might not have thought of is uh, oxidizing. Okay, oxidizing. Um, so dissolving, um, we've talked several times about uh, coming out of solution. Um, dissolving is going into solution. Okay, that is how we get things in there to take out later. So dissolving, going into solution, that is chemical weathering. Limestone is very famous, uh, for lack of a better word, famous for doing that. Um, that's how you get caves, okay? That's how you get your caves. The uh, limestone dissolves very easily into water, and uh, the rock just disappears. Oxidation, the most f common type of oxidation you're familiar with is rusting, okay? Uh, to oxidize something, you add oxygen to its its makeup, and um, with regard to rust and, and any of the others, tarnish is another word. Um, if you have uh, some old pieces of uh, uh, silver, okay, you know they can go to black and you have to polish them, keep them clean. Uh, Statue of Liberty, okay, you know copper uh, oxidizes to that lovely shade of green. And there's a handful of other things, but here's the, here's the bit um, that you knew but didn't really think about it as, as weathering. Um, all of those states are quite typically less durable. Um, rust, okay, you find an old rusty fender and you kick it, it's gonna, you're gonna get rust sprinkling all down in your driveway there. They're nowhere near as strong or durable as the original steel. Um, same thing with, uh, with silver. Um, if silver sits too long uh, without being polished, if that black doesn't get wiped away, uh, it can start to, to pit the surface. You'll find little holes in there. It is a destructive process. All right, so that's it for weathering for now. Let's talk a little bit about erosion. Remember, erosion is the movement of sediments. Accidentally paused the recorder there, sorry. Um, all righty, so... I mentioned this already. I got ahead of myself a little bit, I guess. But uh, with regard to the agents and erosion, remember the wind blows, the water flows, uh, glaciers pluck. I didn't use that one. Uh, blowing, flowing, and plucking. All right. Um, they also flow too. Uh, plucking is, believe it or not, a real geological word. Um, and it refers to sort of that, uh, as that glacier flows over a, uh, a rock at kind of pops it right into the uh, the glacier itself and becomes part of it. Um, you know, picture a, of a hunk of jello, okay? And if you drag it along the table, it's going to get st stuff stuck. That's gross. I'm sorry. But I don't know. Um, so glaciers pluck and flow and, and landslides. All right, that's the gravity one. Um, landslides, things fall. All right. Sediments. We've been talking about sediments. Remember, boulder, cobble, pebble, sand, silt, clay. I just want to take a moment to remind you that weathering produces sediments. Erosion transports sediments. And, hey, hey, guess what? Sedimentary rocks are made of sediments. Yeah. All right. We talked about this too. It's just a formal slide in case you did miss any of it earlier. I want to remind you that during erosion, which is transportation, further weathering, which is breakdown, can occur. That rock rolling along in the stream bed or tumbling back and forth on the shoreline, the movement, as it's rolling back and forth, it can bump into other rocks and one or both of them will get some damage. That's the weathering. What that does is remove the angular edges. 
which is the process rock against rock breakdown as abrasion, remember? And we told you that this can tell us whether it's fresh sediment or not. The smoother, the rounder something is, um, the, the longer it has likely been out in the, in, in the world floating around. Uh, the sharper, um, the thinner the pieces, the, the more recent it probably is. Now, of course, you have to figure in things like the, the durability of the rock and, and so on and so forth, but folks in charge of this stuff obviously know that, so um, it's taken care of. All right, sorting and deposition. Um, we all know what the word deposit means, okay? You've made a deposit at the bank, for example. It means to put something down. Well, that's what it means in the natural world as well, a stream deposit. You've heard that word, right? Um, if you were unlucky enough to, to witness a flood or be uh, near a flood, or even if you were just walking near a stream that had flooded and hopefully didn't bother you, you might see uh, ridges or rows of, of sediment piled up alongside it. That's deposition. Um, skipping down to the bottom bullet here for a moment. All right. Um, the speed of the agent, uh, be it water flowing or wind blowing, uh, determines what sediment you can pick up. I think we talked about this the other day. Um, I think when we talked about graded bedding as a sedimentary structure, and if, again, in a future semester we're doing this in a different order, you'll hear about it with graded bedding as a sedimentary structure. Um, the stronger something blows, the bigger grain size it can pick up. Boulder, cobble, pebble, sand, silk, clay. All right, let's talk about um, water. That's the easiest one, okay? And on a normal day, water moves sand, silt, and clay along in its stream flow, let's say. Well, we get a lot of rain and the water's flowing faster. And guess what? Because it's flowing a little faster, maybe it can pick up some small pebbles on that day. And those pebbles are flowing along with the sand, the silts, and the clay. Well, you get downstream somewhere, and um, for whatever reason or another, let's say the stream is flowing slower now. It's lost some of that velocity. It's lost some of that system energy, I think I call it on one of the next slides. Well, what is the first thing that that stream is going to drop? The teeny tiny little light stuff, the silts and clays, or the heaviest stuff that it's carrying, the pebbles? What's it going to drop first as it runs out of energy? It's going to drop the big stuff, right. Okay, so um, this is sorting. If you jump 10,000 years into the future and that stream is gone, and actually 10,000 years isn't too, too long for a stream at all, but uh, we'll just say for whatever reason this stream dries up in 10,000 years, um, you might see uh, as they're cutting a road through to put up a new highway to Walmarts or whatever they do in the future, um, you might see in this rock an area where there's a whole bunch of pebbles deposited. All right. And if you go down a little further, if you could figure out through ripple marks or through whatever, which way is downstream, you might find what was the next biggest grain size we had in there? Boulder, cobble, pebble, sand, silt, clay. Sand, right? You go down a little farther past the deposit of pebbles and you'll likely find sand being deposited. And then silts and then clays. Okay, silts and clays, they're practically dust. Well, they are dust. Okay. Um, you're standing out in a parking lot or out uh, in nature somewhere, and you don't say, oh my, I've got silt in my eye. No, you say, i got dust in my eye, and that's exactly what, what silts and clays are, or dusts. And they also, when they get wet, they turn right to mud. Mud is made out of silt and clay, not sand. What do you call wet sand? You call it wet sand, exactly. But silts and clays, when they get wet, that's mud. Anyhow. Um, so this depositing, this setting down by size is what we call sorting. And it's then how you get, trying to make the connection here, this is, if you're wondering why I'm still talking about rocks, because that's what we're making, man. All right. We set down all of that sand in one area. Guess what kind of rock that's going to turn into? It's going to turn into sandstone. 
those silts and clays, those muds that just got laid down, what is that going to turn into? It's going to turn into shale or mudstone, so on and so forth. All right, so we got that here. Velocities, or what we call system energy, is responsible for sorting of sediments by size. Um, I, I, I don't know if I said it a moment or two ago or not, okay, but I said it, but I didn't point it out, I guess. It works for picking stuff up, and it works for setting stuff down, all right? You have to increase your system energy to pick up the stuff you don't usually pick up. To carry any sediment at all, you've got to increase your system energy. And then as your system energy goes back down, that stream slows down, the wind dies down, whatever you want to, situation you want to put it in. As you reduce the system energy, then you're able to carry less. All right. Um, there's, a, uh, there's two vocabulary words for this. We save them for the stream chapter, but they detail uh, how much and, and what size sediment you can, you can carry. So... All right, so velocity or system energy is responsible for sorting out sediment by size uh, as erosion ends, deposition occurs. All right, um, imagine yourself driving to the bank. That's the erosion. You give them your money, that's the deposit. And then you're out of money. So you lost your sediment. All right. It's pretty straightforward stuff. And so here we are. <clears throat> Uh, after sediments are deposited, one of two things can happen to them. They could undergo consolidation or lithification. Uh, basically, they could turn into rocks, sedimentary rocks. Or, or these sediments can remain unconsolidated. In other words, just remain sediments. And I have that that implies then that nutrient enrichment to become a soil. Well, that takes time. It takes lots of time um, for animals to come by and uh, munch on their little snack and leave a little residue behind and then have a little poo when they're done and for all that stuff to trickle down into this, into this sediment and build up enough to consider it to be nutrient enriched, all right, or leaves fall and break down and eventually trickle into the, into the sediments. Um, Soils take a long time to make. So when we say nutrient enrichment to become a soil, that's basically because oftentimes in a semester we're going to go to that chapter next. All right, we're at a fork in the road. Um, if I had done this, uh, this semester I did it a little backwards. I did weathering and erosion last. But if I did weathering and erosion first, we're at the fork in the road. One of those forks is going to go towards talking about sedimentary rocks. And then the other fork in the road is going to go towards talking about becoming a soil. I'm not even sure if I'm going to talk about soils this semester. But the um, point is, is this is written kind of black and white. Well, there's definitely a big gray zone right here where it's just what you guys would probably call dirt. Okay? Um, it's just not really great for growing any plants in. Uh, it's certainly not a rock. It's just debris. Okay? Sitting around there at the surface of the earth waiting for something to happen to it. And if you think back to our rock cycle, okay, this all plays into that still. Um, for once, we've got some, some lessons that are coming together. It's not just one topic jumping onto another topic, jumping onto another topic. These all connect for a change. Um, you go back to the rock cycle at any rate, um, and you've got that, that, that arrow between um, you got weathering and erosion, making sediment, and then another arrow from sediment to sedimentary rocks. All right, there's a lot of time spent in that cycle of the loop. I told you that back then, and uh, we're reiterating that now. It's a lot of just sitting around waiting for something to happen. Not horribly exciting to be a rock. All right, and that is uh, the end of my stuff for the weathering and erosion. If you see uh, more stuff in there, you have questions about it, please feel free to ask me. Uh, but I kind of boiled out the most uh, important bits for you to think about and uh, presented them to you here. Take care.